Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about 10 spring blooms that you can add to your garden. So whether you live in zone eight, nine, 10, or 11, anywhere in the Gulf Coast, the Southeast, or of course, Florida, we're gonna be talking about native plants to add to your spring garden. Number one, let's first talk about one of the most classic blooms to be adding to a spring garden, which is black-eyed Susans. If you're interested in getting one plant that can add a lot of blooms, a lot of color to your garden, black-eyed Susan is a phenomenal pick. Rutabecchia hirta, one of the types of native cone flowers to the state of Florida and throughout the Southeast, that can pack a punch of bold yellow. It's a wonderful color that, that will take up a nice chunk of space in your garden, whether you're going for a cottage garden look or you're just looking to add color. This plant is great because it is great for pollinators like bees and butterflies, and it's great for birds once the flowers start to fade when we're beyond spring. What's also great about this plant is that you don't have to plant it every year. It is a short-lived perennial that comes back year after year. Now, it's not gonna live for a decade, but it'll last you at least one, two, maybe even three spring seasons. And what's also great about it is that your first year after you put it in, it'll look good, but your second year, it'll look great. Now, one of the challenges with plants like Black Eyed Susan, especially for my South Floridians, is that this plant is native to the very northern parts of the state of Florida and may not work as well for you. But no fear, there are actually a lot of different types of native cone flowers to my home state of Florida. And one of my favorite ones is orange cone flower. Rudebeckia fulgita is very similar to Black Eyed Susan's with the color and the shape of the flowers, but the leaves are just a little bit different and it handles some of those warmer, hotter, and more humid temperatures a little bit better. It does the same thing for wildlife, supporting bees and butterflies, and of course, feeding our birds. So whether you get a Black Eyed Susan or an orange cone flower or one of our other amazing amazing coneflowers. This is one of the blooms that I think you should definitely consider adding if you really want to add some great native flowers to your garden. Two on the list is going to be another type of coneflower similar to Black Eyed Susan's, but instead of giving you a gorgeous yellowy orange color for your garden, it's going to give you purple. And that's going to be Echinacea purpia, also known as purple coneflower. Purple coneflower native throughout the United States is a wonderful plant to add to your flower garden for spring because it brings in the beautiful purple. And similar to Black Eyed Susan's, it's going to attract bees and butterflies and its seeds will feed our birds. And when it comes to the flowers, they look really similar to Black Eyed Susan's. It's going to be a cone flower, which means it's gonna have some gorgeous petals that as they continue to grow and evolve, they drop down, allowing for the seeds to take on that conical shape that gives it the name coneflower. Now you'll notice if you have a plant like this where you can't actually see the flower that the leaves are quite a bit different from that of our Black Eyed Susan. With our Black Eyed Susan we kind of have this like soft round shape and kind of a cooler looking leaf. Not cool like oh that's cool but like just actually it's got a little bit more of a silvery tone to it versus our purple coneflower. You can see it's got more of I don't know what the name of this shape is, but you know, kind of like a spade shape with rough edges. It's got kind of a more darker olive, it's kind of got like an olive green undertone to it. So it's a little bit different, which is why they are in different genesis. And of course the flowers are gonna be different. And I think it's a cool mixture. It's actually a classic cottage mixture to put purple cone flowers and black eyed Susans together. So if you're looking for bold spring blooms that are gonna just go and go, combine them. Now, here's one of the things that you need to watch out for. Because purple coneflower and plants like Black Eyed Susans are actually pretty common in the flower trade, the word of warning is, is that just because it says it's purple coneflower, just because it says it's a Black Eyed Susan doesn't mean it's gonna work as well in Florida. Florida has a really challenging climate and even plants that are native throughout the Southeast and Gulf Coast tend to have changes that started to happen to help them survive and are really unique challenging climate. So you're gonna to wanna to find a supplier through Florida Association of Native Nurseries. I will put a link in the description so that you can find a native nursery near you so that you can get actual true purple coneflower for the state of Florida. It's native to the Northern regions, but it can be grown all throughout Central Florida. And what's great is similar to those Black Eyed Susans, you can plant it once and it will actually come back the next year. So if you're looking to add some beautiful purple, oops, wrong plant. <laughs> if you're looking to add some beautiful purple to your garden, go ahead and check out Purple Coneflower. Number three, if you enjoyed the idea of Black Eyed Susans and Purple Coneflowers, but you like more of a daisy look and you want it to be a little bit taller and it bloomed beyond spring, I recommend Starry Rossum Leaf. Starry rosin weed is one of the wildflowers that is native to Florida that blooms almost the entire year in my yard. 
I would say other than the coldest months. So this is a great one that if you're looking for almost a year round bloom, you should strongly consider. Frost and weed is great because man oh man, I will tell you the monarch butterflies love, love, love this one. It has great two inch yellow flowers. Now classic yellow, unlike the black eyed Susans, which is kind of like a yellow orange, this is more yellow, yellow. So if you're looking for a, also what's great about these is they tend to get a bit taller. So if you have things like cone flowers in the front, this is a great one to put behind because they will get into that two, three, four, and even up to five foot range throughout the entirety of the year. Most of the plants near the ground and the actual flower part comes up on these long, tall stems that put out flowers. So this is a great one to mix in with some of your mounding flowering plants, whether you're going with native plants or with some Florida friendly, you can put this in between and the flowers will come up and show for you. So I think this is a great one to mix in with other flowers, though you can have it stand alone by itself, but it just won't look quite as full as you might want. So consider Starry Rossumwee for your garden. Number four is gonna be Spiderwort. If you're looking for a plant that can handle a bit more shade and actually might prefer a bit of shade and is able to deal with kind of moisture soil, which for us, for me who lives in Florida, right? We kind of live in a giant swamp. Plus we need something that can take a little bit more uh, of the wetness. Spiderwort is great for this because this plant does really well in semi-moist areas plus handle shade and it's going to give you flowers that are about half inch to three quarters of an inch and that might feel a little small but the great thing is they come in little clusters so that which none of these are open just to be clear so it gives you a bit more impact of the bluish purple color that they have. They come in a range of colors they can be kind of your purpley pinks all the way to your kind of cooler blue with a dash of purple and i really like that because when you're in those kind of shadier spots and it's heating up in springtime i know because we live in the south <laughs> spring's actually kind of warm a little bit hot at times it's really nice to have a flower that you can enjoy when you're in those shadier areas what is also great about this plant is the entire thing is edible everything from the flower to the leaves to the roots you can eat them there are people out there who like to candy the flowers and people add the leaves to salads. The fact that it's edible actually might be an advantage because this plant, once it gets going, it's gonna come back year after year. It is going to thicken out and it can kind of get a little bit messy looking. But take a problem and make it into a solution. So take thinning and make it more like harvesting and then it's not really as big of an issue. So consider for your shadier areas or your wetter areas, spider work for your garden. <laughs> Number five for your spring garden is gonna be wild petunia. Wild petunia is an amazing plant because one, it likes full sun. It also can deal with a lot of shade. It can deal with slightly moist soil, but it can also deal with drier soil. And it is a host plant to two of our different butterflies. If you're not familiar with what a host plant is, host plants are what butterflies put their eggs on so that their baby caterpillars can eat, 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 eat the plant. And what's amazing about that is that you can get two different butterflies in the state of Florida, like the white peacock and the common buckeye. Now, if you're worried about the caterpillars totally eating down your plant and then not being able to enjoy the flowers, no worries. Those caterpillars are so tiny and this plant grows pretty quickly that by the time they're eating down the leaves, you'll barely even notice. Wild petunia is a wonderful plant because it has these pale bluish purple flowers that are really enjoyed by butterflies and bees alike. The long tubular shape is great at holding nectar, which of course our butterflies love. And you can bring some color and joy to your garden with these one inch flowers. Now this plant doesn't get too big. It only gets about a foot foot and a half, maybe two feet at its height. It'll bloom in spring and summer and even fall. It does have a pretty long bloom season. It kind of depends whether you live in the more cooler climates or the more Southern climates, but it is a great addition to your garden. So whether you're looking for something a little shady, something a little bit sunny, something a little bit of wet, something a little bit of dry, and want to get some really cute purple flowers, wild petunia is for you. Number six is going to be one of my hands down favorite wildflowers for the state of Florida. And that is common tick seed terrible name, but it's a great plant. <laughs> Scientific name, Coreopsis leavenworthi, and that's actually what I like to call it, because who wants to call a plant a tick seed? So Coreopsis leavenworthi is one of the great wildflowers. It has a nice low shrubby look. It puts out flowers that are about like a half inch, three quarter inch wide, maybe an inch max, but it puts out a lot of them, like a lot, a lot of them. And what I really enjoy so much about these is they put out long, thin stalks for those flowers so that they bob 
in the wind. So versus where you got kind of your cone flowers, which are very hardy looking and they have big flowers and they're just they're like, oh, we're here, we're taking up space. If you're looking for something to like wave in the wind, it's just, it's just like, I don't know, it makes me so happy. This plant is much beloved by birds, bees and butterflies. So you'll get a little bit of all of them when it comes to this plant. What's also really cool about this plant is it's the state wildflower of Florida. Now it's not specifically this one. It's just kind of a general Coreopsis, which there's a more than one type. But the way you can kind of tell the difference between them is Coreopsis Leavenworthy, which is my favorite, is yellow with a black brown center. One of the one that's often listed as the state wildflower and very similar is Coreopsis lancelata. I don't remember if it also has a tick seed name. I'm pretty sure it does. They all are just terrible names, but who really cares because they're just, look at that. It's just gonna start waving in the wind. Now this one hasn't bloomed yet, but very similar to Coreopsis leavenworthi is it has a yellow bloom, similar in size. But the big difference is it's yellow with a yellow center. So if you're looking for a lot of yellow with no interruption, Coreopsis lancelata would be a better choice. But if you want a little bit of contrast with the black, brown center, Coreopsis Leavenworthy is for you. But either choice is going to be a great choice because they're just beautiful flowers that whether you're a bird, a bee, a butterfly, or a gardener, you're just gonna like them. Thank you. So consider adding Coreopsis to your garden. Now number seven, well actually before we get into number seven, I want to give you this tip because if you haven't bought native plants before or been to a native nursery, it might feel like there's a lot of green happening. There's a lot of little plants happening but there's not a lot of big bold flowers. How can you be confident that these plants are the things that you want? We're used to shopping at places like Home Depot and Lowe's. Oftentimes when you're getting annual flowering plants, they're at the peak of their flowers when they're on the shelf and you're only gonna get potentially a month, maybe six weeks of flowers versus when you're getting a Florida native plant from a Florida Association of Native Nursery, you're oftentimes getting the plants not when they're at their peak, but before they peak which is why it makes it even more amazing because you're gonna get the full amount of blooms from this plant instead of just getting the tail end. So it can feel a little bit challenging going to a native nursery because all you see is this and you might not know a lot about native plants. But what's also great about so many of the native nurseries around Florida is they have these picture cards to help you understand what you're going to be getting. And if you're not sure, always, always ask people who work at the native nurseries. All the native nurseries that I go to, including this one, Sweet Bay, have wonderful people working at them who are just waiting and wanting to answer your questions and help you find the right plants for your garden. So hopefully this list gets you a start on some of the great plants that you can add to your garden, but know that this is not what you're getting in the end. It's just the beginning. Which brings us to number seven, which is Stokes Aster. So Kezia Levis, this plant native to Northern Florida. If you're looking for a big, bold bloom out of all the flowers we talked about so far, this is the one with the hands down biggest single flower. We're talking about a flower that sits in the two to three inch range. It is a purplish blue and everybody loves it. Bees love it, butterflies love it, and of course, gardeners. We love this one because who doesn't want giant purplish blue flowers for their garden? Now this plant's going to enjoy full sun with maybe a slight amount of shade. So if you're one of those people who is new to Florida native flowers and you're not ready to just rip out all of those kind of classic flowers from your Home Depots and Lowe's, this is a great one to go and intermix with them. So the leaf portion is going to stay only in the first three, four, five, six inches. No, not even six inches. One, two, three, three inches but it's going to put up long stalks with these big bold beautiful flowers it can have multiple flowers on one stem and it just it creates such an impact so what i like to do is mix this with some of my more mounding flowers like your black eyed susans your purple cone flowers your orange cone flowers like we talked about and have this one kind of come up in those little gaps in between now this is going to be a perennial wildflower so it is going to be here next year and the year after and what's really cool is it will actually it, it propagates itself one of the ways is through division so when you come to next season you'll find another plant right here and right here so you can dig them up and start filling in any gaps that you have or go fill in new spaces 
or you can just let them stay and then have lots and lots and lots of more flowers in your garden. What also is great about this plant is that it's gonna bloom for huge chunks of the year, but one of the best seasons for it to bloom is actually in springtime. So consider adding Stochesia levis, AKA Stokes Aster to your garden. Number eight is gonna be blue-eyed grass. If you're looking for a low growing grassy type flower that puts out lots of blooms, especially in the springtime, you should consider blue-eyed grass. It puts out flowers that are about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. That ranges in color everywhere from kind of a lighter blue to more of a royal purple blue. I find that this plant does best in places that are really sunny in the winter time, allows it to fill in, but then picks up some more shade as we head towards summertime. What's great about this plant is similar to many of the plants on this list is it's perennial, so it will stay and come back year after year with its blooms. And what's cool about this is similar to Stokes Aster is it actually continues to grow through division. So you can see this plant actually you can see one, two, three, maybe even four plants that you could divide out to continue expanding your blue-eyed grass. This is great for those little areas where you would typically put kind of one of those low grassy plants, but unlike most of the low grasses, this one actually flowers because it's not actually a grass. It puts out tons and tons and tons and tons of those little beautiful bluish purplish flowers. And so we could just get add a little bit of fairy ephemeralness to your spring garden. I really like this plant. Speaking of plants that have a very ephemeral nature, I'm not gonna put this one as an actual official, official plant on the list, but I really do think it's worth noting because this plant does blooms for a short period of time, like two, three weeks, but it's a great one to put in a pot or to put in locations where you know you're not gonna step. And that's gonna be rain lily. It doesn't look like much for most of the year. It looks like a whole lot of nothing, but when you start to get some of your first rains at the end of the winter and it's warming up, you get these gorgeous, gorgeous white lilies. And just like that blue-eyed grass, it will continue to bulb and divide and bulb and divide so that you will continue to have an expanding patch of lilies that come up every year with your first rains. So if you're looking for something that kind of has that ephemeral nature to really bring that fairy, magical, whimsical cottage garden to your Florida garden, just maybe throw in a rain lily. Maybe put it in between some blue-eyed grasses. Just an idea, just a thought. Just throwing stuff out there for you guys. But consider rain lilies. Number nine for spring blooms that you should consider adding to your Florida garden is going to be goldenrod. Specifically, this one is seaside goldenrod, which is also known as Soledago semperverans. Native range goes from Canada down to Florida, all the way through the Midwest, down to Texas. It is got a huge range and it is actually a huge plant. But what can make this great for adding to your spring garden or one of the many other native golden rods? I mean, there are a lot. Everything from sweet golden rod, Chapman's golden rod, pine barren golden rod, flat top golden rod. There are a lot of options and they give you a lot of range and sizes and ways that those wonderful golden rods can come up. But what's great about these ones is, again, they are perennial. But if you've added many of these other flowers, you have a lot of low growing plants that are kind of one foot, two foot, three foot, but you need some things maybe to come up in the back of your flower garden, goldenrod is what you may want to consider. And what's amazing about this plant is it starts to put out its first blooms in spring. So you get stalks that are going to be more in that two foot, three foot range. But as the year goes on, they may get higher and higher like this one and get up to nine feet. Yeah maybe 12 feet. <laughs> What's also amazing about the different golden rocks is there are no problems, just solutions. As long as your location is sunny, whether you live seaside or you live near swampier areas, drier areas, there is a golden rod for you. This plant is also amazing because it again is one of those plants that's going to help your bees, your butterflies, and your birds. Monarchs in particular, if you are into helping save the monarch butterfly, really like this plant. It's also great because it will come back year after year. So once you get it in your garden and really well established, you are going to have golden rod for years to come. I feel like I can hear through the video right now, someone's asking, but what about blanket flower? Why isn't it blanket flower yet? Is that number 10? It should be number 10, but it is not number 10. And the reason is because it is no longer considered native to Florida. It is still native to the Gulf Coast areas and still native to the United States. It's just that specific species is no longer native. There's another type of Gallardia, but when it comes to big spring blooms, meh. 
So that is why it is not on my list, though it is considered Florida friendly. So if you wanna add it to your garden with all these other wonderful Florida natives, go right ahead. And number 10 for big, bold, beautiful flowers for your spring garden, it's going to be tropical sage. Tropical sage is an amazing plant that not only do bees love, not only do butterflies love, but hummingbirds love. So if you're interested in getting hummingbirds into your garden, I strongly recommend this one. What's amazing about this plant is not only does it come in this gorgeous coral tropical red color, it also comes in white and my favorite flamingo pink. This plant can be semi-perennial, but it also reseeds really aggressively. What's great about this plant is not only does it give you wonderfully gorgeous, vibrant color throughout the springtime, but can also bring you color throughout the summer and fall too. And if you're looking for other plants that bloom throughout the majority of the year, check out this video on 10 Florida native plants for beginners. Or if you're looking for vines with big, bold, beautiful blooms, check out this video right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!